excited to be with you again. For those of you who were here last week, I wonder what's changed. Can you see anything different? That's right, we have a nice fluffy carpet to make sure we feel cozy and comfortable during our time together. We have the sponge hair and we have this really exciting space bin with some objects that will help us with an activity later. But before we do anything, let's light our candle. Now we light a candle to be reminded of this amazing person that we call Jesus. And Jesus often is known and often said that he was the light of the world and is still the light of the world. And the amazing thing about that light is that it's given to all of us. So this light represents the light that Jesus shines and gives to us so that we can be the light of the world as well. So last week we heard part one of a creation story that we can find in the Bible. Does anybody remember what, what it said? Well, I'll give you a quick recap. It said that before there was anything, there was nothing. And God created a whole world. Can you believe that? I wonder if you were to create a whole world, what would you make sure that you include? So after God created the whole world, God made a human, but that human was lonely. So God made a ton of animals to keep that human company. Now we historically know this human to be called Adam and we've known him as male. Then the story says that Adam was still lonely, even though he had all of these animals as company. So God took one of Adam's ribs and with that rib and with the dirt and soil around him, God created another human. Isn't that amazing? And God called this human Eve and we have known her to be a woman. I wonder though, do we know any more expressions of gender in the world? Yes, there are people who identify as both male and female, as neither male nor female. In fact, there's a whole big gender spectrum that people can identify on. And anyone who identifies outside of that male or female structure can feel left out of this story. So let's make sure that when we think about this story and when we tell this story, we do it in a way where all are included. And all of the amazing and varied ways of family that can be formed are included in our story as well. So let's watch part two of our video to hear about what comes after God tells them not to eat from the tree at the center of the garden. God created earth and thought it would be a great place for things to live. God created two humans and a bunch of animals. God let them live in a garden. They could eat anything they wanted except for fruit from the tree at the center. There were lots of animals in the garden. However, this story focuses on one animal in particular. Can you guess which one? 
The snake liked to make trouble, so one day the snake said to Eve. Go ahead eat from the tree in the center of the garden, it won't hurt you, go ahead. God had only told Adam not to eat from the tree, Eve didn't hear it herself. The snake was very convincing and sneaky so Eve agreed to eat some of the fruit and gave some to Adam as well. Adam and Eve both realized they had broken God's rules and feeling ashamed of themselves decided to hide from God. When God went to visit Adam and Eve and found them hiding, God realized they had eaten the fruit and went to talk with them. Wow, that's so suspenseful. I wonder how you feel when you are told not to do something. I wonder how it feels when a parent feels disappointed in something you've done. What does it feel like to be in trouble? What does it feel like to be convinced to do something you know you don't want to do or shouldn't do? These are all tough questions. And they are questions that this story can raise for us because it's a story that we celebrate about the creation of the world, but it's also a hard story sometimes. So let's get back to nature. Let's get back to creation to discover and continue to discover the creation and world around us that God made so good. So we're going to go on a scavenger hunt and I'm going to show you an object from this awesome space bin. And what I'm going to ask you to do is go and find something in nature that matches the color of this object. Now, remember, you can only take things that are already on the ground or have fallen off of a tree or a plant. You can't take anything that's living off from where it's connected to. So if you wanna do this one by one and pause the video, you can, or you can wait until the end and do them all at once. And then we're gonna come back together and pray. So first, oh my gosh, I wonder what's in here. Can you guess what's in here? I don't know. Oh, it's a lemon. So your first task is to go find something yellow. What's next? Oh, it's a jar of coconut shreds. So that means you need to go find something white. I wonder what's next. Oh, it's a scrunchie. Can you see what color that is? It's purple. Go find something that's purple. Oh, it's a pair of green scissors. Can you go find something green? And finally, this is the best one. This is so fun. It's a rainbow ball. So I think that means you can either find anything you want in whatever color or try to find something multicolored. Let's close our time together with a prayer and you can repeat after me if you want to. Dear God, Thank you for the beauty of creation, for creating a world we can feel at home in, and for all the colors of the world. Help us to remember to care for creation with the same care and intention you created it with. Amen. 
So before you go, we're going to transform our light so that it comes with you and goes with you as you leave this space. We'll see you next week, everyone. Bye.